Hello everyone, I am EA Copen and this is the Broke Author's Guide to Finding Time to Write. What's up YouTube? It's been a week since my last video. Thanks for coming back for another. Uh, I was going to do formatting this week, but unfortunately it's just too late in the day for me to do that. So I'm going to cover another topic that I get a lot of questions about, which is how the heck do you find time to write? Most often this question comes up when people are posting their word counts. You see some people posting, oh, I wrote 10K today. I wrote 12,000 words today or 2,000 words today. And it just seems impossible some days to get those words down. Trust me, even for those of us who are getting those big word counts on some days, the next day it might be just as impossible to us to get 500 words down. It really depends on the day. However, there are some things that you can do to improve your productivity, especially if you're someone who's not yet a full-time writer. Usually by the time you get to being a full-time writer, you have a routine down, you understand what it takes to achieve what you need to achieve. However, if you're just getting started out, as a lot of you probably are, this guide's for you. Okay, so before you try to find more time to write, the best thing that you can do is track what you're doing right now. I don't just mean like writing, I mean every day. Get yourself a schedule, put it together, and see where you can find five extra minutes here, five extra minutes there. Believe it or not, that really does add up. Now, do you need to track every single minute of every single day? Drink coffee for 6.2 minutes, then stared at the wall and contemplated reality. No, you definitely don't. As long as you're getting the basics down in a document or a schedule somewhere so that you can go back and look and see how you spent your day, that's good enough. You do not have to track every single minute. Now where you do want to track as accurately as possible is when you're looking at your social media time. This is probably the biggest time sink that you don't realize is eating away at your life. Facebook is really, really bad about it. Twitter and Instagram, I mean, it depends on who you are and what's your favorite drug of choice. I mean, social media platform of choice. But chances are you're probably spending way more time there than you think you are. When I first started tracking my time, I thought, oh, I'm definitely not spending more than an hour a day on Facebook. So I actually set up a timer that tracked the time I spent there, both on my PC and on my phone. And I was finding pretty quickly that it was shutting me off much sooner than I thought it would. I only gave myself like an hour of time allotment for Facebook. And I was like, no, I'm definitely not spending an hour a day on Facebook at it. But as it turns out, I was probably spending closer to three or four hours a day. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to give up Facebook. No, no, I don't, don't want to give up Facebook. Facebook. You can still have your Facebook time, but you got to have a little less of it, or at least relegate it to after the work. But EA Copen, you're saying, one of the bits of advice everybody gives is that you have to be on social media. You have to interact. You have to have ads. You have to do all this that requires being on social media all the time. Not if you do it right. If you're doing it right, it'll work without you for at least a couple hours a day. I promise. The world is not going to explode just because you couldn't get on Facebook between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. You're going to be okay. If you're like me and you have like zero self-control when it comes to Facebook, oh look, a notification. First thing you need to do is shut those off. Shut off Facebook notifications, email notifications, Twitter notifications, Instagram, all of it, all of it gone. You don't need to uninstall it from your phone but you do need to shut off the notifications. That'll keep you from reaching for your phone every few minutes, every time it goes off. Now, the first couple days that you shut off those notifications, you're still going to reach for your phone every couple minutes. You're like, oh, I haven't heard the Facebook ding in a while. What's going on on Facebook? As you detox, it'll get easier. These days, half the time, I don't even know where my phone is. If you're bad about using social media on the PC like I was, you're gonna wanna get an app maybe something that monitors your time on the PC, where you go, and cuts you off after so much time and or blocks out certain hours. I use an app called Cold Turkey. It cost me somewhere around $20 for the lifetime of the subscription. And trust me when I say, 
it's really hard to fool. There are ways to get around it, but you have to go in and you have to disconnect from the internet. You have to mess with the computer's clock. Nobody's got time for that. Okay, you've looked at your social media. You're not really a social media person. You're not spending a lot of time there. That's not where you're gonna wanna shave your time, right? Unlikely, since that's probably what most of us are guilty of. But let's say you're the exception to the rule. Where else can you look for time? Well, are you a cinephile? Are you like me and you like to binge Netflix every time a new season of whatever show I'm watching comes out, I've got to sit down and I have to consume the entire season in like a day. I can't stop myself. I am a binger. Like I know when Altered Carbon comes out later this month, that's what I'm going to be doing for like two days straight. I'm going to be in front of my box watching Altered Carbon from first episode to the last episode and I'm not going to get any work done. So knowing that, I just block out those couple days for writing. I'm not gonna write those days because I know I'm not gonna get any work done. I do the same thing every time a new season of The Expanse comes out too, by the way. I just sit and I binge through it all. Enough about that though. Let's move on to more ways that you can find time to write. I think you get it by now. Basically, what you need to do is you need to go through your daily routine, find things that you're doing that are extra. Hobbies or fun things that you can kind of relegate to maybe the weekend or just to an hour a day instead of an hour and a half. It's really easy to find 20 minutes here, five minutes there, 15 minutes here, and it adds up over the course of a month. You might be surprised how many hours in a week you can find just by cutting out one social media. And here comes the next problem that I hear a lot. I have a full-time job. I work nine to five, five days a week. Sometimes I work overtime. How am I supposed to find time to write, especially if you have a family or other responsibilities outside of work? Well, that's a tough one. Really the only good answer, you can get up an hour earlier and work before work. Maybe just get a hundred words down. Eventually that adds up. Or maybe you're able to work after work. Just 50 words, hundred words, 250 words. You don't have to go for the big word count. The people that are posting that they're writing 5,000 words a day, 6,000, 10,000, nine times out of 10, they aren't going to a full-time job. You don't, it's not a competition. We don't have to compete. I'm not going to win some imaginary race just because I write 6,000 words a day versus you writing 2,000 words a day and Bob Joe over there who writes 500 words a day. It's not a race. Get the work done. That's all there is to it. It does not matter the pace. That you're going the rest is just comparisonitis and we don't need to be comparing ourselves to anyone but ourselves as long as you are making progress then you're doing what you're supposed to be doing let's say you can't really get up early and you don't want to write after work because you're just so freaking exhausted after work that you're just creatively drained you can't do it okay what about the weekends what about your days off what about your commute? What about standing in line at the grocery store? If you can get one sentence down, that's writing. That counts and it helps. I wrote almost an entire book on my phone exactly using this method. Every time I was sitting in the car waiting on my husband to run an errand, like if he was running into the bank, pull out my phone, write down a couple lines and be done when he came back. I basically just used Google Docs and anywhere and everywhere I went, I had some device with me where I could work. I had a couple of long car rides during that period. And so like we had to drive from south Southeast Ohio to Northeast Ohio a couple of times a week. And so I was using that time to write a novel on my phone. I've written on airplanes. I've written while sitting on the toilet. I've literally literally closed the bathroom door with my laptop and my headphones just pretend like I'm on the toilet so I can have five minutes a piece away from my kids to get some work done. I mean, there's ways to do it. If you want it, you will find a way to make it work. It's really just prioritizing. I mean, a lot of times um, you may come home from work feeling kind of drained and you're like, eh, I don't really feel like I can get 200 words down. And then you don't do it. You don't even try. I bet though, if you would try, 
Maybe you won't get 200 words down, but maybe you'll get two. Hey, good job. You made progress. It's something. You need to stop beating yourselves up over not hitting these almost impossible word count goals. Like what I was talking about, I'm going to take a couple days off when a show that I really like comes out. I'll do the same thing if I know that a highly anticipated video game that I've been waiting for will come out, like Cyberpunk 2077. When it comes out, I'm done. I'm taking a week off. When my kids have spring break, I won't take that time off usually, but I will scale back how much I work. I'll do half days instead of full days. Same thing during the summer. Usually one week out of every month during the summer, I'll do half days instead of full days because I know that I'm going to want to go do things with my kids. I can't expect to sit at the keyboard and do seven or 8,000 words a day, five days a week, every day for 365 days a year. That is a really good way to burn yourself out. Trust me, I've been there, I've done it. You don't want it to happen to you. Other ways that you can find time to write is to know yourself. Now I know this sounds like some Zen BS, but really, know when you are most productive during the day. I know that if I get my butt out of bed at 5 a.m., I am not going to start writing at 7 a.m. It's just not going to happen. I'm going to come to my keyboard and I am going to pass out. I'm going to fall asleep. It's just, it's never going to happen. I'm not a morning person. So rather than try to force myself to write in the mornings if I don't feel up to it, I will do my other admin tasks. I'll answer my emails. I'll outline. I will plan my day. I will put together promos. I will make promotional images. I'll do all the other admin tasks that I need to do. I'll work on my website. Whatever I need to do that day, I do in the mornings because I happen to know that my most productive time is actually after lunch, usually between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Now, even though I'm kind of an evening person and I like to work in the evenings, I know I'm not gonna get much done after three because that's when my kids get home from school. And they're generally just too much of a distraction just because they're kids, that's what they do. They're loud, they're noisy, they're messy. And I wanna go spend time with them. So I don't want to be stuck behind a screen working until like 7 p.m. Because then I'm going to miss all the time that I have with my kids. And what is the point of working my butt off and making all this money and doing all of this if I don't get to enjoy some of that time? That's literally the whole reason that you work a job is so that you can have time with the people that you care about, right? So if you're stuck behind a desk writing 12, 13 hours a day and then going to bed, you're totally missing out on that time. Okay, another thing is writing sprints. Now everybody says writing sprints will help you write faster. They'll help you write more, etc., etc., etc. If you haven't heard of the Pomodoro technique by now, you need to go Google it or watch somebody else's video. I'm not gonna cover that. I figure that if you're watching this video, you have some basis for what a writing sprint is, but you may not know that you should be tracking those from day to day. What you should be tracking is the time that you did the sprint, how many words you got per sprint, what day of the week it is. Usually just the date is fine. But if you do that for a month, a week or whatever, and you go back, you can find pattern. Like I was able to go back and see that the sprints I did between 10 a.m. and noon, they weren't usually that good. But the sprints that I did between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. had the highest word counts consistently. There were days where I was off, but in general, those were my best two hours. Find what your best two hours are. Instead of tracking word count, write by time. Just write for two hours. If you get to the keyboard during your writing time and you find yourself just kind of staring at the blank screen and you can't get the words to come and nothing feels good enough, write anyway. You cannot fix what you do not write. And I promise you, I promise you, everybody's first draft is awful. I have seen first drafts from best-selling authors. I have seen some really freaking awful first drafts of people that went on to sell thousands and thousands of books. It all gets fixed in post, as they say in the film industry. For us writers, post is editing. It is proofreading. It is the formatting and the, the parts where you read it out loud to yourself. Just get the freaking story down. Write the words, fix them later. So what if it's not perfect? The simple fact is that people don't talk about is that not every sentence you write is gold. Not every sentence that Stephen King writes is terrifying. Not every sentence that George R. R. Martin writes is great. Nobody is on 100% all the time. At best, you can expect for 
one book to have three or four scenes that really resonate with the reader. And if you do that, you're actually way ahead of the game. That's it. Three or four scenes. What really matters to the reader isn't going to be that this sentence was constructed in such a beautiful, genius way. They care about characters. They care about conflict. They care about the story. In that order, actually. So focus on emotional resonance, getting the story down. Tell yourself the story first. Everything else can be fixed later. Are you a procrastinator? I am. I'm the president of the procrastination club. We meet later. But the truth is that if you're a procrastinator, and a lot of writers are, one of the reasons why you might not be working on that novel is you keep telling yourself, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll get to it later. I'll do it on the weekend. You gotta stop telling yourself that, first of all. That's unhealthy thinking. Instead of trying to write a 50,000 word novel in one month, why don't you spread that across like three months? Doesn't that make more sense? I mean, if, if you struggle to get 500 words a day on the page, why do you think you can jump in and do 1,600 words automatically? No, you gotta build that up. It's like writing as a muscle. And you start out weak. You have to build up. You start out by just getting to the keyboard every day for a month. I mean, if you get to your computer and you write one word every day for a month, you've got a habit started. Then you build up from that. You write one sentence. You write one sentence every day for a month. One paragraph. I mean, you got You can build slowly, and that's totally valid and totally okay. Nobody in their right mind actually expects you to jump in from zero words per day and get to the keyboard for 30 days in a row writing 1,666 words a day or whatever the NaNoWriMo thing is. That's just silly. I love NaNoWriMo. It's actually how I finished and published my first novel. But keep in mind that when I started it, I had been writing since I was 15. So I had already built up that muscle. Don't expect the impossible from yourself. Anyway, that was a tangent I didn't mean to go down, but let's talk about deadlines. Yes, deadlines. We all hate them, but we all need them. It might seem really stressful at first, especially if you're not used to working on deadlines, but deadlines are great. They will force you to work even when you think that you can't. And trust me when I say you need to do that. If you don't push yourself, you cannot grow. If you're comfortable, you're not growing. What you're doing should be at least a little bit difficult, a little bit hard. If it's easy, you're doing the wrong thing. Okay? You need to push yourself to be better. Deadlines are also super important if you plan on working with someone else. Not just a co-writer. I mean, your cover designer, your editor, or, you know, if you want readers to know when to look for your book, you need to have a date to tell them because they're going to ask, When's the next such and such gonna come out? Gee, I don't know, I'll just, I'll work on it on the weekend and maybe I'll get it done. And your readers aren't gonna hang out if you aren't taking it seriously because that sure sounds like someone who is not taking their work seriously. Try that versus March 17th, look for the next book in the series. It'll be right here on Amazon on this date. The pre-order goes up this day. I'll have snippets on this day. That person sounds organized. But if you set a deadline, you have something to work towards. It's not so much that you're racing against time as you're telling yourself, okay, if I write this many words a day, five days a week between this day and this day, I'll be done. And then I can take two weeks off and do nothing. And it feels more like you're rewarding yourself when you do get the day off for doing that. Not only that, but like if you wind up writing in the traditional world, you're going to have to go to people and say, I'll have this on this date, or they'll come to you and be like, have this ready by this date. At some point in your writing career, you are going to have to work on a deadline. You will find that will be much easier to do and much easier to impress other people if you're already used to doing it. Hey, EA Copen, can you write 20K by next week? <laughs> in my sleep. Could I have done that three years ago? Hell no. I can do it today because I've worked myself up to that point, which seems to be kind of a running theme here. Know what your limits are, work within those limits. So if you're gonna set deadlines, set realistic ones. Now I might say, yes, I can write 20K by next week, but uh, that may not happen. My kid could get sick. I could fall down the stairs and break my leg. 
those are unforeseen things that you kind of just have to build into your work time. So if someone asked me, hey, can you write 20K by next Friday? I might go, maybe? Let me look at my schedule and see what else there is. Because I know if my kids have a dentist appointment on Tuesday, I'm not going to get as much writing done on Tuesday. So it may be, maybe I have to work harder on Saturday. Maybe I have to move some things around this week. If I don't have a deadline, I don't know that I have to do that. I don't know how people work without deadlines. It seems like it would be so freaking stressful. Do you write with deadlines? Do they help or hurt you? Does it make you nervous? I mean, I can't work without. They're literally the cornerstone of my whole publishing career. While we're on the topic of deadlines, I want to show you a really cool program called Pacemaker. It's actually a free website that you can use with a paid version that has additional features. It will help you figure out how many words per day you need to write to hit the deadlines that you set. So I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Okay, here we have pacemaker.press. Now I am logged into my account and I have the paid version. So I get this nice little calendar when I log in. If not, you get a different screen, but the way to set everything up is the same. You can go to see the plans that you've already got. Now this is what I'm working on right now. And you can see that on the first day that I started writing, I didn't write very many words at all, and that's typical for me. I know that on the very first day where I start a new book, I'm only going to write between 500 and 2,000 words. Not very much. It's usually the lightest day that I have because I have to write the first sentence, and that alone takes me a long time usually. And then I kind of like build up and did some really hard work the next couple days. Um, the the truth is is that like this 11,350 day. Uh, I didn't write all of those that day. Uh, I had an old draft of this that I was kind of copy pasting some things into, but I did write about probably 9,000 words that day. And you can see that the next day I did write 9,000 words. But on a more typical day, you can see that I'm doing about 2,500, a little more, a little less. And I am taking days off here and there when I need to. Let's create a plan. Let's say I'm going to write uh, the next Doodle Black. I put in the title, say that I am writing a novel. You don't really need to update that. Um, I know that it's going to be about 90,000 words. If you don't know the word count, you can guess because you can always adjust this later. Say I'm going to start writing it April 1st. Now. Knowing what I know about how I can work, it would be absolutely stupid of me to say, I'm going to start writing that on April 1st and it's going to be done on the 10th. Because that means I'm writing 9,000 words a day for 10 days. Some people, I guess, can do that, but that is too much freaking work for me. And I like to take my weekends off. 9,000 words a day is just too hard. So more realistically, say I started on April 1st, Let's give myself an easy goal and say I'm going to finish it on the 30th. That's 3,000 words a day, but again, I'm still not taking weekends off. So let's go down here and say weekend skip. Can I write 4,091 words a day? Probably. I know that I can do that, so that's not really a hard goal for me. Now, if I were thinking... Well, 4,000 words a day is easy. I know I can do at least 8,000 words a day. Uh, let's say I decided to do that. I said, oh, I'm going to write 7,000 words a day. But then what if on like April 8th, like this section right here, I know my kids are going to be on spring break this week. Actually, my youngest son is going to be in Washington, D.C. It's his first trip on his own by himself. And I'm going to be a nervous wreck, so... I can't freaking write 7,000 words that day. Even knowing that I'm going to go and say, I'm going to finish on the 30th. But knowing that I'm going to be a freaking nervous wreck during that time, we're going to pick that date range, which is April 6th through April uh, 10th. And I'm going to do less those days. 2,308 
That'll take me about 90 minutes to write. And surely, since I don't have a full-time job and I have literally nothing to do that day except clean house, do chores, and mom stuff, uh, I can find 90 minutes in between all of my mom worrying uh, to, to write 2,308 words. That's a totally doable thing. And so this is a doable plan. But if you look, because I reduced the amount of work these days, the amount of work on all these other days went up. So can I write 4,616 wor words uh, per day? Yeah, probably, um, but chances are good I'm actually gonna miss some of these days. So I'm actually gonna add some time to the end. I'm gonna add myself um, four extra days to the end, just in case. And if I need those extra days to hit the deadline, uh, that's no big deal. It'll just adjust the plan eventually. And I can always come in here and be like, oh no, it's the 16th and I am way behind and I'm not gonna get it done in time uh, and change it to like the 8th or whatever I need to do. Uh, you may be asking yourself, what's the point in having a deadline at all if you can just change it? Because honestly, readers and your cover artist and your editor are all going to be way more understanding if you say, look, it's the 16th. I'm supposed to have this done in two weeks and I'm running way behind. Uh, how much is it going to mess you up, cover artist and or editor, if I am three days late with it? Most of the time they'll be like, oh, not at all. And then you can go to your readers and be like, oh, I thought this would be done on the 30th and ready to publish on the 30th of the next month, uh, but I'm running behind. So it's been delayed, but not delayed indefinitely. And most readers are like, oh, okay. You know, and as long as you figure that out before you've put up the pre-order, uh, there's generally not a problem. But you try when you set your, your dates to pick a date that you know you can handle. So if it's like, here, I won't use those actually. Uh, if it's like, I know that, I know that I could have it done on the 30th. I could probably have it done on the 30th, but I know I can have it done on the 8th. The better day for me to choose is the 8th. And then if I get it done on the 30th, it's like, yeah, I'm a badass. I finished it early. So pick the date that you think, yeah, I can hit that. And then I would add, you know, three days to a week to that, depending on how fast you write. And then make that second date your deadline because shit's going to hit the fan. I mean, there's going to be days where you're not going to be able to get to the computer and write. And it's not always going to be your fault. I mean, sometimes like the power might go out or the weather would be bad or you have an emergency or your car breaks down or any number of reasons. So give yourself the space to work. Okay, so that was a look at pacemaker.press, which is one of my favorite tools for getting organized as a writer. And you can use it for free if you go to pacemaker.press. The link will be in the description. Um, the paid version is like $8 a month or $72 a year. And it, the only real difference is that with the free version, you can only put on two plans at once. But I like to have enough plans on there to schedule out six months to a year. And so it was worth the $8 for me. I suppose you could do the exact same thing with like a planner or a bullet journal or whatever you use. I'm a digital person. I like to have that stuff in front of me digitally and I need the reminder. Every time I log on to the computer, it's now my habit to, I open up my email and as I'm answering emails and stuff, I also open up another tab for pacemaker. And that's how I go through mentally. What do I have to do today? Pacemaker tells me. And so, that's how I stay organized. And being organized is definitely the key to finding more time to write. Not only that, but just being organized in general, it's something that you'll find becomes more and more essential as your career goes on. And the sooner that you can do it, the sooner that you can learn what you're capable of and what you're not, what you need to farm out to other people and what you can do yourself and when, the easier time you're going to have as a writer because I've got what, like 30 books out now and I need to know when each one of them 
is going through a different promotion. I need to know where they are online. It's just, I need to be organized. It's not just for me, but for my readers when they have questions, for my cover artists or whatever, if I need to update a cover, and for my PA and my other author friends who may or may not promote my work on occasion. And so being organized is not just about helping yourself. You are helping your career and you're helping everyone around you and reducing your stress. It's just a good idea. Okay, that is all the time I have this week. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss next week's episode where I promise we're going to do formatting. I know that I hate formatting and I'm not avoiding doing it. I just didn't have enough time today to get it all set up. I promise that I will record it this week and have it ready for next week. All right. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.